Hey everybody, another little interview with Daria. We actually just had a candid conversation about, you know, the differences of mentality things, uh, since she's visiting and kind of exposed now to both. Um, <laughs> and we're kind of talking about love um, in relationships between men and women and, you know, children, uh, childhood, uh, how our parents, you know, were with us and how it's in U.S. It's a lot different. So we just talked about, you know, children. I thought it was interesting. Uh, what you were saying about how we were growing up like in USSR, for example. Yeah, because we're all children of the USSR, right? We were born in the 80s, mm -hmm. and the USSR collapsed in 1991, right? Mm -hmm. So we still spent, um, yeah. you know... Lots of years in the USSR and the mentality that our parents had and our grandparents had is very different from people who live now in Russia or Ukraine, you know, independent countries. Um, so I was always amazed when I watched American movies, you know, the children and parents always told each other, I love you on the phone or like mm -hmm. every time, every time they finish speaking, they say, oh, bye bye, I love you or hey, I love you, so something like that. And in, you know, in Ukraine, it's, there is nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I have never heard from my parents these three words, I love you, never. And, you know, it's a very frustrating because uh, you actually had to earn their love you had to do something yeah you had to be good at school you had to do your homework you had to wash the dishes mm -hmm. and only then you know your parents maybe. would say yeah maybe yeah not 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 that's not a fact but this is so uh, maybe. true you know now when you're talking about i don't remember my parents telling me <laughs> i love you you know, I'm thinking now, like, like with my son, I have to control myself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like a mad yeah, We're all different now. Yeah. We're, we're a different generation. Yeah, it's totally different. We are way more open. And, uh, yes, you had to deserve, you know, the affection. You know how I would deserve? I would get sick a lot. My thing was, because uh, yeah. I, there was a lot good on my household. My mom had Good three, idea. Yeah, my mom had three, you know, three of us, and... There was a lot of challenges and struggles, and so I would get sick. That was my way of getting attention. Getting attention, yeah. Yes. What about you? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't remember getting sick a lot, but I remember uh, whining a lot. Mm -hmm. So I was always whining about something I wanted, and this way, yeah, I wanted to get my parents' attention. That was one thing. Another thing was I was very good at school. Mm -hmm. I was a brilliant student. I was one of the best. And, you know, I studied very well. Mm -hmm. And that was my way of showing my parents that I deserve their love, too. Yes, that is, you know, that is so interesting. <laughs> yes, you, you had to be, you know, you have to be, you have to show results. I was... To work for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's so, so funny. I, I was a good student, too, but it was like something taken for granted. I don't remember, you know, my mom would say, oh, you know, you're really a great student. I don't remember my mom saying that. Yeah. So, I think my, my dad said you did well, maybe like twice in my life. <laughs> yeah. And my mom used to tell me the, the most pleasant thing she would say, it's you're smart. You can do it. You're so smart. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. That's... You have to get the best grade because you're so smart. Mm -hmm. You know, I have some friends who are Indian. And it's so funny because they go to school, like high school with Americans, and when they bring B plus or A minus, you know, oh, good job, honey. And when my Indian friends, you know, bring B, it's like, you know, yeah. it's almost like a scandal. It's like... That's <laughs> what I had in my life, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> different. It's different. Different attitude, yeah. Yes, very so, you know, but again, with our generation, with the younger generation, you know, we are more open, we have different points of views, and in fact, we have different <laughs> conflicts with our parents because they're trying to teach us how to do things, and really, um, they're kind of talking with us from another planet. Yeah. So yeah. it's our children talking with us, <laughs> with us a planet. Generation gap. Yes. <laughs> 
Yes, and I liked what you were talking, uh, you know, what you said about, you know, we don't have enough of men in our country because for so many reasons we had a war, we have, I mean, yes. all sorts of things. So I like your um, <laughs> your uh, explanation about, can you say that again about how... <laughs> The approach about, uh, that you have to fight for men or what? Yeah, <laughs> cracking me up. Yeah, because uh, there are not so many men in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and uh, well, I don't women know. are used to chasing men. Mm -hmm. That's what never happens in you know in 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 in, uh, in the wild nature. Yes, never happens. That would be in, so in, scary. If the leopard is chasing the lion. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you know, uh, any other species other than a human being, it's always a, a male chasing a female, mm -hmm. right? And only in post-Soviet uh, countries you can see that. The women are chasing men, which is, which is abnormal. It's unnatural. You know, it can say... be. You know, I would say chasing, but I would like to explain here what chasing means. Here, chasing means that, you know, we would learn so many things to please a man, and our parents would tell us, you know, I mean, for example, I don't know about our parents, but when our parents were young, you know, if, you know, in a couple, two people are working, you know, the guy is working, the woman is working, she is working, I mean, she is having her job, but she comes home, she has to take care of kids, she, must, she has to make dinner, she's going shopping, she has to clean yes. the house, and the <laughs> husband just shows up, and you have to be all pretty, and, you know, yes. hey, you like some dinner? So, um, yes. <laughs> so, so, kind of chasing, in a way that, you know, you think all the ways how you can please a man, and I, I really think it's... <laughs> Even before marriage, you have to win your man's love. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm just enough. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. You have to work for it. You have to win his love. You know, I'm And this is a very big mistake women, uh, you know, make because they think, like, they think that, okay, if a man, uh, so I don't know how to put it for you to understand me right, so for you not to get me wrong. Um, women think that they should do to men something they would like to get, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they start doing that. And this is BS. So it doesn't work. <laughs> because a man has to do things for a woman for the relationship to be happy, right? And the woman just has to be pleased and to accept it. That's how it works. In our post-Soviet countries, uh, things are the other way around, and it doesn't work. Wow. I'm serious. I'm, I feel like I'm missing out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. No, it's just, like one, one woman, maybe it's four, four or three women to one man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, guys, I want to tell you something, and that's from my own experience. Oh. <laughs> I said that, but still... If the woman is, if she's a powerful woman, if she's strong, if she's bright, if she is outgoing, she does have a number, despite of this uh, demographic problem, she does have many men around her. Of she course. Does. If, you know, if, if she has a personality and she is attractive and she knows her value, if she doesn't follow the system and she knows her value, she has yeah. plenty to... If she broke out from that system in yeah, time. Yeah, if she broke out on time, she, she, you know, she has plenty of admirers and they feel that she knows her value, so they all around. Now, I cannot guarantee that the person she will choose would be the best one and then he will treat her right to the end of her days. But don't get <laughs> relaxed thinking that you just need to show up and that lady that you want will just be an easy win. She probably won't because you're going to be interested in somebody who is of interest to you, who knows her value, who is stand out from the crowd. Because I talk with some of you and sometimes, I mean, you have pretty high standards. So uh, you will have to work hard. <laughs> yeah. There is no way you can escape that. <laughs> yes. Because, uh, you know, we don't really follow our mom's 
systems. Uh, unfortunately, yes. there was a lot. Mm -hmm. So there was uh, what I was trying to say that there was a lot of judgment back in USSR. Our parents could not get a divorce if they were unhappy. Yes. They were judged, and if, if the woman is single and she has a child, it's like a tragedy uh, forever. And if she never been married, married, it's like, oh my God. But those times are gone. <laughs> I, I bet they were fun. <laughs> <laughs> but they are in the past. <laughs> yes. So if you, know, if you want a personality, a powerful, you know, strong, beautiful woman, you have to fight for it. So, yes, I made my point. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yes, thank you guys. I just want to give you, you know, a perspective from another Ukrainian lady who <laughs> is fluent in English so she can really express you very well. And as you remember, she is a, an American English coach, so you can contact and uh, you can get some help with American English or Russian, because Daria also offers Russian and Ukrainian too. Of course, no problem. Yeah, and Ukrainian, la Ukrainian languages. Yeah. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope you laughed and had fun. Bye. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you.